guys, Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to Steam Stories. It looked like spilled milk. Now, what does that mean? Have you figured out what we're going to be learning about today yet, friends? You're so smart. We are learning about clouds, which is pretty cool. So what is a cloud? Well, water vapor is all around us. You just can't see it. There's water in the air everywhere. And as it gets hotter, it rises. And when it rises, it starts to cool down a little bit. And then that water vapor clings to dust and other pollutions that are in our air and turns into droplets, or if it's really cold, ice crystals. And those water droplets and ice crystals all gather together to create a cloud. Isn't that cool? Well, now let's read a story that'll help us learn a little bit more about how clouds are formed. Our first book today is part of a series of nonfiction books about weather. This one is called Clouds. It's written by Ann Hergs and read today with permission of Bellwater Media. Clouds float across the sky. Clouds are made of water drops. Sometimes clouds are made of ice crystals. Clouds form when warm air rises and cools. The colder air cannot hold as much water as the warm air, and some of the water changes into tiny drops. The water drops mix with dust in the air, and the water drops and dust clump together to make clouds. Clouds carry water to the earth. Rain falls from clouds when the air is warm. Snow falls from clouds when the air is very cold. Clouds come in many shapes and sizes. Some clouds are high in the sky and some clouds are low in the sky. Serious clouds are curly and wispy and sometimes they look like a horse's tail. Serious clouds are thin enough to see through. Stormy weather can be coming if serious clouds are in the sky. Cumulus clouds look like cotton balls. They're puffy on top and flat on the bottom. Cumulus clouds that are small and white bring good weather. Sometimes cumulus clouds grow bigger and taller and they become dark cumulus nimbus clouds. And those clouds bring thunderstorms. Stratus clouds are low in the sky and they are flat and can be thick or thin. Rain or snow can fall from stratus clouds. Sometimes the rain is a light drizzle. A cloud close to the ground is fog. Fog forms when the earth is warm and the air is cool and moist. Sometimes wind blows fog away and sometimes fog dries up in the heat of the sun. Meteorologists study the weather. The shapes of the clouds tell them what kind of weather is coming next. Look up in the sky. What kind of weather do you see in the clouds? And now, friends, let's learn a little bit more about the water cycle and how clouds are formed. All air holds water, and when it is in the form of an invisible gas, we call it water vapor. When warm air rises, the air pressure causes it to cool down and expand. The water vapor that's in that warm air now condenses around small pieces of dust and other pollutants and forms tiny droplets around each particle. Those droplets gather together to form a cloud. When the droplets come together and turn into larger droplets, gravity causes them to fall in the form of rain or, if it's cold enough, snow. This is called precipitation. The water is collected on the ground in puddles and lakes, rivers, and oceans, and eventually it evaporates back into the atmosphere and the water cycle starts again. Clouds get their name by their shape and where they are located in the sky. Serious clouds pictured here are high in the sky. You can usually tell which way the wind is blowing by looking at which direction the serious clouds are pointing. These clouds are made of ice and let you know that while it may be sunny now, the weather is about to change. Stratus clouds, pictured here, are low in the sky and frequently cover large portions, if not all, of the sky. 
They are made up of large water droplets and typically bring rain or snow. Cumulus clouds are in the middle of the sky and are big and fluffy, seen here. These clouds come in many different shapes and are the best type of cloud to lie on your back and watch float by. See what kind of shapes you can see. They're made up of water and ice, but are usually only seen during sunny weather. When the air pressure changes, however, cumulus clouds transform into cumulus nimbus clouds, which bring heavy rain, snow, lightning, and even tornadoes. They have a very distinctive shape, kind of like an anvil. They're bigger on top than the bottom. These are the main types of clouds, but there are others, so keep a lookout. Our next story, friends, is about a little cloud who tries very hard to have a big impact. This is Cloudette, written and illustrated by Tom Lichtenheld, and read today with permission of Henry Holt and Macmillan Publishing. Cloudette was a cloud, a very small cloud. Usually, Cloudette didn't mind being smaller than the average cloud. In fact, being small had lots of advantages. Everyone called her cute little names. Hi, Pipsqueak. Morning, small fry. Hey, shortcake. She had lots of friends. No matter how crowded it was, she would always find a good spot to watch fireworks. She could sneak through tight spaces, excuse me, hide in small places. I can't find her anywhere, me either. <laughs> and she even had a special little space that always made her feel cozy at night. But once in a while, all the other clouds would run off to do something big and important. Come on, Cloudette, join our cold front. We're going to make a huge storm. Yeah, we're going to water some crops and make some mighty rivers flow. Oh, no thanks. I'll just watch from here. Cloudette could see them in the distance doing all sorts of important cloud things. And this made her want to go do big and important things, too. She wanted to make a garden grow. She wanted to make a brook babble. She wanted to make a waterfall fall. And she thought nothing would be more fun than giving some kids a day off from school. One night, Cloudette lay awake wondering what she could do that was big and important. She thought maybe she could work for the fire department. Sorry, we just brought this brand new pump truck. Or maybe they needed some help down at the garden center. Oh, sorry, these plants take tons of water. But nobody seemed to need her. Sorry, it's all done by machines. Claudette was feeling blue. The next day, there was a big storm in Claudette's neighborhood. The sky got dark, the rain came down like cats and dogs, and the wind blew harder than she'd ever seen wind blow before. When the storm finally stopped, Claudette realized she'd been blown far from her neighborhood. She didn't know anyone here, and they didn't seem eager to get to know her. Hello, hi, howdy, how you doing? But pretty soon, she was making new friends and seeing things she'd never seen before. Welcome to the, this neck of the woods, small fry. What a cute little cumulus. Have you seen our new pal? Barely. Then she heard something she'd never heard before. Ribbit. She looked down at what was supposed to be a pond, but was really just a puddle of mud. What happened to your pond, froggy? It dried up, and now it's more like a puddle than a pond. And this gave Claudette an idea. A brainstorm, really. She held her breath until she started to puff up all over, and then she turned a nice blue-gray color. She kept growing until it looked like she was ready to burst. She shook from her behind until it made a little rumbling sound. Not quite what you'd call thunder, but enough to let people know that they might want to grab an umbrella. And then she did what she wanted to do for ages. 
she let it pour. Cloudette rained on that little puddle until it grew into a big puddle. And she kept on raining until that big puddle grew into a perfect pond. As soon as she stopped, frogs of every stripe and spot came jumping into that pond. And they all let out a big thank you in unison. Ribbit! Claudette was exhausted, but happy. Even the higher-ups were impressed, which got her thinking. Nice work, Cloudy. Yay, way to water. Roger's precipitation pipsqueak. That was some righteous rain. We knew you had it in you. I bet there are other big and important things a little cloud can do. And off she went. The end. Are you ready to do some fun STEAM activities, friends? Do you remember what all the letters in STEAM stand for? Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So we are going to start by making a cloud in a jar. We have some STEAM kits that you can pick up in our lobby. Unfortunately, they don't have jars, but they do have an activity that you can do at home called a cloud in a bag. And we're gonna learn a little bit about that as well. The STEAM kits also have a really fun art activity that we'll get to in just a few minutes. So let's head over to the craft table to learn a little bit more about how to make a cloud in a jar and in a bag. All right, friends, we are going to attempt to make a cloud in this glass jar. Now the materials for this experiment are not included in your STEAM kit. So if you would like to do it at home, first things first, you're gonna need to have a grown-up's permission because this does involve using really hot water. You'll need a glass jar with a lid, some ice, and some hairspray, and that boiling water. So let's start by opening up our jar. Oh, that was a little tough. And very carefully pour in that, oh, wait, hairspray first. I forgot. You're gonna spray the inside of your jar with some hairspray. Ooh, that allows the water vapor something to stick to. Now pour in that boiling water. Put the lid on and a couple of ice cubes on top. And let's see. It's working. There's a cloud in my jar. How cool is that? All right, friends, we're going to try this one more time with a more up close view so that you can see the cloud forming a little bit better. And we're also going to try adding the water first to see if that changes anything. Remember, make sure you have a grown up to help you with this really hot water. All right, water in, hairspray in, lid on, and ice cubes to cool it down. Wow, that's pretty cool. experiment, we did provide a supply to do a cloud in a bag in our steam kit. What you'll do is put a little bit of water in the bag. Our instructions say about a third, but that makes the bag kind of heavy and it's hard to keep up. So just, you know, an inch or so, use your best judgment. Then tape it up to a sunny window using masking tape or painter's tape. Don't want to use duct tape because it might leave stains on your window and I don't want any angry grown-ups coming back to tell me that their windows got ruined because we tape bags. So keep that in mind. And then you're going to observe your bag. You'll watch it, you know, check in maybe an hour later, two hours later, three hours later, and you'll see some condensation. That is the water evaporating up based on the heat. 
and if you tap those condensation dots of droplets of water, they will rain down. And now, friends, it is time for our title book. It looked like spilt milk. Written and illustrated by Charles G. Shaw and read today with permission of HarperCollins Publishing. So now that you know we're talking about clouds, you know that sometimes they can look like crazy things. And that's what this book is all about. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone. Oh, yummy, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Bummer. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Sometimes it looked like a pig, oink, oink, but wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, Ooh, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. <laughs> Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl. I guess I see that, but it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, <laughs> but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. And now friends, let's head back over to the craft table to learn how to make ink blot cloud paintings. I wonder what your cloud's gonna look like. Are you ready to learn how to make some ink blot style cloud paintings? I know I am. Included on our take home kit are four pieces of blue paper and some white paint. Now I should mention that this white paint will stain clothes, so make sure to protect your work surface and wear something you don't mind if it gets paint on. We're gonna start by folding one of our sheets of blue paper in half. Make a nice crease and then open it back up. Our kit suggests using a spoon, but wouldn't you know it, I could not find a spoon here in the library, so I am gonna use this popsicle stick. Give your paint a bit of a stir, and then sprinkle, scoop, pour a bit of white paint on your paper, no particular order. One thing I will caution is don't, don't use too much paint. There's an awful lot of paint in our kits, and you don't really need it all. If you use too much paint, do you know what'll happen? It'll squeeze out the edges and make a huge mess. So a little bit goes a long way. Once you have your paint on your paper, you're going to take your paper and fold it back over along that fold you already made. And then very gently rub your hands over top of it to smooth it out. And you can do that a couple times. You'll feel the paint under there. So just kind of move it around, give it a little rub. Are you ready? One of the best things about doing this style of painting is that every one is going to look different and you never know exactly what you're gonna get. Are you ready? Ooh, this one kind of looks like a butterfly. I thought my example one looked like a butterfly too. Pretty cool. And you can do this with all of the paper we've provided. And if you have paper at home, you can keep going until you've run out of paint. Now, when you're looking at your cloud painting, see what it looks like to you and then show it to somebody else and see if they see the same thing. It'd be pretty interesting to find out if they do.
Ta-da! We would love to see pictures of your completed projects. Feel free to send us a picture to pleasanthills at einetwork.net or post it to our special Facebook group, Pleasant Hills Library Virtual Programming. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our stories whoops, and science experiments today, and I'll see you in two more weeks on April 28th for our next STEAM stories, The Best Nest. Until then, stay safe and have a good day. Bye.